I'm Tanji with Foreclosures Daily. We are a nationwide lead provider. We provide leads to investors, realtors, attorneys, and just your basic first time home buyer. We've been in the business for almost 20 years now. We're so excited. Now, we have been, since then, we've been the number one internet destination for the most detailed information out there. All of our leads are awesome. They're weekly, they're fresh, they're all farm for real estate. I'm Tangie Cousins. I've been with Foreclosures Daily since they opened in 2004, and we've helped many investors, realtors, and attorneys grow their business and increase their revenues by using our leads here at Foreclosures Daily. I also teach the do's and don'ts of marketing and unique marketing techniques. So how we are different. Like I said, all of our leads are weekly and fresh. And they're all farm for real estate. Other companies tend to be quarterly and they're not farming for real estate. You know, you can purchase lists from all over the entire nation, right? But the problem is, is they'll give you 300 people that may file probate or divorce and maybe only 15 are gonna have real estate only seven to 10% of the people or so that pass and file probate actually own real estate today. Would you want to market to 300 people if you only needed to market to 15 or 20? We're only going to give you the 15 or 20 that have real estate. Other companies are going to give you all 300. And it's a lot of research to figure it out, right? So in their defense, the reason why they're not doing that is it's tons and tons of research to figure out if John Smith owns property. Can you imagine how many John Smiths are in your county? So we wouldn't want you to have to do that. So we're going to give you only the ones that physically have real estate. So we do understand the importance of having fresh data. Our data is typically weekly and farm for real estate. Let's talk about some of the leads we have here at Foreclosures Daily. We have things like probates, pre-probates, inheritance, code violation, eviction, divorce, things like that. Probates and pre-probates, though, guys, by far are some of the best leads out there. They have a ton of equity. They typically don't mind taking a discount, and they're extremely motivated to sell. People are almost always older when they lose their parents, you know, like maybe... 50 and 60 years old, and sometimes even 70 themselves when their parents pass. So usually they do not want that property. Now you're dealing with a very motivated seller who typically don't mind taking deeply discounts for their properties. Most people don't want to move in with their parents' property when they pass. They want, they have their own problem, property and they're usually established in their own life at that time. So they typically will not want the property and they usually are very motivated sellers. All of our leads for probates, pre-probates, inheritance, code violation, eviction, divorce. They're all weekly and fresh, all farm for real estate. When you work these types of leads, you're never going to get more than 25 leads a week for one county, right? It sounds like a very small amount. So you've got to get past that, you know, the volume by numbers. You don't have to work massive amounts of leads to get the results that you're looking for when you're working a niche group like this. Think about it. You don't have to market to more than 25 leads a week for one county for probates. That's awesome. That's unheard of. And the massive response rate that you're going to get is huge compared to what you'd get if you marketed to, let's say, 5,000 people. You could get the same results with marketing to a very small list. When you work these types of leads, you're going to work a small group of people, but you're going to yield way higher responses because you're targeting specific groups of people who usually want to sell their property versus people who don't. So that's the benefit of working a list like this. Now, when you do work our leads here at Foreclosures Daily, we give you many things, and it's called a marketing toolbox. It's a lot of different bonuses that we give you inside of this marketing toolbox to help you become more successful at utilizing our list. Now, one of the big things that we give you when you purchase our list for free, this marketing toolbox comes with these mailers. You get access to the postcards, the letters. We give you access to all kinds of different things. Now, these postcards are awesome. You know, the national average response rate when you do mail marketing is only like a half to one and a half percent. I literally have investors all over the nation getting like three, five, 10 and 15 percent response rates with these types of postcards. So I highly recommend these, you know, just sending them a picture of their house. Be like, hey, is this your house? Are you selling this? It's like a real catchy postcard. You know, it really makes people want to respond to something like that. We also offer certain letters and things like that. This company will actually mail these postcards for you for only 38 to 42 cents with postage. Most companies charge like a dollar to a dollar 50 to mail something like this for you. But this is 42 cents with postage is what they charge for the ones with a picture of the house. 
38 cents without the picture of the house. It's really, really cheap. And you know, their minimum is only like 50. So it's a very small amount. Most people's minimums are like a thousand to get a price like that, but not with this company. We also do the handwritten letters with like the handwritten font. So um, they actually have this machine that will handwrite, like do a font, like as a handwritten uh, letter. And they also do the um, envelope that way too. They only charge 64 cents with postage to send this for you. And it makes it look like you hand wrote that yourself. And there are certain things you can do like unique marketing techniques to try to get people to open your mail. Like, um, you know, you can do the letter and like right on the back of it, like cash involved, you know, everybody's gonna open your mail then, right? You can do other unique things. Like uh, there's just one guy that, that has the, these kids, they take these crayons and they draw like little stick people all over the envelopes, you know, and he has them send those out, you know? So there's all kinds of unique things that you can do. You can do squishy mail and things like that to get people to really wanna open your mail over anybody else. Now, there's not a lot of competition when you're dealing with things like probate and pre-probate. A lot of people are scared, right? When they talk about the death, it's like, oh, I don't want to market it to somebody who just died, you know? So that's kind of like a scary thought, but we know scared money don't make money, right? And a lot of people have a misconception of probate. They think it's this big, long process. In most counties and states, you do not have to wait for the property to go through probate before you can purchase. You can actually purchase the property almost right away. Depending on whether the judge has full authority or partial authority, you can typically purchase the property almost immediately. So a lot of people don't realize that, so they won't use probate, which makes it for a way less competitive list for you to use. Now, here's some of the bonuses that you will receive when you purchase our list. We're going to talk about the bonuses, and then we're going to get Teresa on next. So maybe I'd say in about two or three more minutes, we'll get Teresa on. And um, some of the bonuses that we do give you access to is we give you access to all of our phone scripts so that you know what to say to the people when they answer the phones. We also give you access to our six touch campaign, our, our mailing campaigns, teaching you like how often to mail, you know, the spacing in between, how many times to mail, what to mail first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, you know, um, a lot of people wonder, you know, well, if I mail this now, what should I mail next month? And what should I say? Well, there's no reason why you can't mail the same thing and just be like, hey, I sent you this about a month ago. Do you still have the property? Are you interested in selling yet? So you can just do like simple, basic marketing like that, you know, and never talk about somebody's unfortunate situation when you market. You get a webinar uh, training when you purchase a list that teaches you all of this, the do's and don'ts of marketing, I call it. So it's a, a really, really good, unique uh, webinar that teaches you the do's and don'ts of marketing and unique marketing techniques on how to get people to open your mail. We also give you a probate book and the probate book was written by Kevin Sales and you can look it up. And if you have a Kindle, it's uh, I think you can get it on Kindle too. It's Probate Real Estate Sales 101 kept by Kevin Sales, S-A-Y-L-E-S. And we actually know the author. He's been on our webinar a few different times teaching these seven ways to make money with probate real estate investing. So you'll get access to that too. We also give you two special links. One link takes you right to the company we recommend that'll do skip tracing for you. And then another link will take you to a mailhouse company that we recommend. And these will both give you deeply discounted rates. This one company will skip trace for you for 15 to 20 cents. And they do a specialized probate search to get you the most likely to be the next of kin. So it's pretty, pretty cool. So I'm going to talk about Teresa for just a moment. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen because she's going to start sharing hers in just a moment. Now, guys, I met Teresa years ago, I think at least five, six years ago, maybe longer at the Tampa Rhea group. It's a local real estate group here in Florida. And uh, Teresa actually was in the medical field for like over 20, 25 years, I think. And what she did is she quit the medical field just like that. And within 30 days, she had her first real estate deal that yielded her $20,000. So it was huge, right? That's awesome for somebody who's been working in the medical industry all those years to make 20 grand just like that in less than 30 days. So not only that, she's the founder of the Women's Real Estate Investors Networking Group. It's called the REIN, uh, W-R-E-I-N. And um, it's a Women's Real Estate Investors Networking Group. And she's also the co-host to Without Fear for Her Future podcast. So Teresa's made uh, a pretty big stand in the community and she stands to the community quite large on a national level. She has a huge following. I don't even know. I know at one point in time, she had like 15,000 people on that group, but I'm sure she has many more now. And I, um, her name is Teresa Todd. Some of you may know her as Teresa Lugton, but she actually goes by Teresa Todd. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get her on here. Teresa, um, I know you're, I know you're back Hello, there. Hello, Tangie. Hi. Thank 
thank you for getting on with us today. We really appreciate it. Oh my gosh, I am so excited and honored to be here. I think it's been like a year since we had you on, right? I know, I know. Well, and thank you for that amazing introduction. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and let you take it from here. And if you need me, just give me a shout. I'll be here in the background learning like everybody else. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, um, hello. I am going to be talking a little bit today about flipping, how to make a lot of flipping money. Who's interested in that? Well. Let me um, just tell you a little bit about myself first. As Tandy said, um, I am actually in Dallas, Texas and founder of the Women's Real Estate Investors Network. And um, we are just a couple of years old. We started uh, at the very end of 2019 and we are now the largest Women's Real Estate Investors Network in the nation. We have had over 200,000 women register. 200,000, is that not crazy? Um, Just in these last few years for my Without Fear of Her Future Masterclass. So um, every few months, I host a seven-day masterclass where I teach women only, Uh, not that I don't absolutely love men, but um, when I got started just a few years ago, I started myself um, in real estate in 2017 on April Fool's Day, and it was 97% of real estate investors were men. And I wanted women to know that they could also be investors. And so uh, we, you know, I just started locally in Dallas and started teaching a few ladies here and there and wasn't even for sure women wanted to learn how to invest in real estate. Had my very first meeting and I had 40 ladies show up. So we just kept doing that. And, and um, a couple of times a month, we would have meetings and we just grew all over Dallas and the Metroplex. And then we went to Houston and then 2020 hit and the whole world shut down. And so I began to host master classes online and we were able to go nationwide, which is, was just insane. And so now we have like, I just finished a master class where we had 11,000 women register for this last master class. So insane. And they are having, and so my students are having this immensely um, amount of success. I mean, I have ladies that will join and within sometimes six months, they are able to quit their nine to five and they're going full time. I teach all the thing, all the things I say, I'm not a one trick pony. I teach all of the strategies. So um, we wholesale and flip houses and, um, Uh, also rentals and short-term rentals, mid-term rentals, which is kind of new and exciting. And just, and as well as purchasing properties subject to the existing loan, seller financing. So we teach all of the strategies and we have all of the resources um, that these women need. And it has just been so much fun. I was telling Tangie before I jumped on, I literally just moved into my own home. Um, I have this weekend. So this is Tuesday and I just, just um, now moved in. So it is chaos all around me. I was trying to throw my office together so I could jump on this webinar, but this house was a flip property. It's on the lake and it was one story. And we actually took the whole roof off and had added another whole story. And I have a, a so I have a home office. I have a gym uh, upstairs. And so super, super excited about all of that. So anyway, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about myself. And so I am going to jump in. I'm going to share my screen and, and pray that this works. You know how that is. It's always, um, it, it, oh, hold on just a second. Let me see just a second. I'm going to stop sharing for just one second and go. Give me one second, ladies. I'm just going to get my, get this ready. Oh, 
Okay, did it work? Tangi, can you tell me? Yep, I can see your screen. Okay, what do you see? I see Dream Big, how to make a lot of flipping money. Okay, nope, hold on just one second. You do see the how, hold on. Yeah, and it's not in presentation mode. That's the problem. All right, almost, we're almost there. Oh, it keeps going to my notes instead of my, hold on just a minute. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing just a sec. Give me a second, talk to them, Tangie, while I figure so, this out. Guys, also too, when you get your probate and pre-probate list, the biggest thing I hear is, you know, is there PR on there? And the thing is, is a lot of people think there has to be a personal representative for the person to contact. And I can answer you this. Sometimes there will be in certain counties and sometimes there won't be on a probate, but you're never going to have that on a pre-probate, right? A pre-probate is one week after the death. We verify there's real estate attached and we give the lead to you one week later. The benefit of using a pre-probate leads is not only are you first at the door, but if they do inherit their property via a trust, you could buy now, no lines, no waiting, right? And then there's probate. Probates is one week after they file. We verify there's real estate attached, and then we give the lead to you one week later. The benefit of using a probate is not only will you be first at the door, but if they inherit the property via a trust, you could buy now, no lines, no waiting. Now, I do see the dream big. I see it now, full presentation. Woo! Woo! We're good to go. <laughs> well, now everybody knows the difference between probate and pre-probate and how awesome they are. And they are making your women a ton of money, Teresa, just so you know. I love it. I love it. Okay. So let's just talk about how do you make a lot of flipping money? So I love to teach what I say um, you can't learn from HGTV. So I'm sure that if you are on this webinar and you are interested in flipping, that you probably are like me and you love HGTV. I absolutely love to see what they do, but they leave out so many missing pieces that um, I think are so pertinent to being successful as, as, a, as a flipper. So I literally hear this story all the time. And I, I think about my hair, hairdresser. I had a new hairdresser a while back and I was telling her, and she was asking me what I did. I said, flip house. And she goes, oh, I tried it. I tried it. And we literally didn't make any money and it took us forever. And it was just so difficult. But what she did not know is she had just watched some HGTV. Her and her husband got super excited and they decided to flip houses. But there were so many things that she didn't know. So one of the things that I love to teach is, um, well, let's see. Now I can't get it to go forward. This is so crazy. Do you have I may teach this whole thing without slides. Do you have a cl clicker uh, or do you have your up and down arrow? Your I have my up and down, but it's, I'm clicking it. You can hear, I can hear it, but it's not moving. Okay. Actually, I'm okay. I'm just going to stop sharing. Okay. And, I know um, you don't need that anyways, Teresa. You can talk for hours. And yes, you know I, so I much. certainly can. I, I may, yeah. I, I, uh, I'm just going to start. And so one of the things that we have to, to know is how to purchase these properties at the right price. And that's the biggest mistake that people make is that they do not know. So we have a formula that we use. And if you will purchase every single property using this formula, well, then you're, you're, it almost guarantees you to make money. So many people want to, they just call up a realtor and they are going to try to find a, you know, they tell their realtor, Hey, I want to invest. And they're like, Oh, I can buy, I can find you an investment property. And, but they do not know the golden formula. So if you have a pen, I'm going to share the golden formula with you. It is 70% of the ARV minus repairs, 70% of the ARV minus repairs. And so if you don't know what the ARV is, that is the after repair value. That is what is the, um, what is this property going to be worth after it is um, after all the repairs and the rehab has been done. What is it going to be worth after repair value? You need to know what that is. 
And then 70% of that. So let's just say that um, you the, the ARV is $100,000. ARV, that's what it's going to be worth. You would run your comps and you would find out that this piece of property after any of repairs or rehab or updates have to be done on this property, it's going to be worth, for easy math, we're going to say $100,000. So what is 70% of that? 70,000 70, is 70% of 100,000. So 70,000, that's the first part of the formula. The second part is a minus the repairs. So after you do that, let's say that it's going to cost us about $10,000 to do these, to, to make this property. And that's what it's going to cost in the repairs and the rehab to get this property worth $100,000. So it would be minus the 10,000. So 70,000 minus the 10,000 is $60,000. So you would have to purchase this property that you're about to flip for $60,000. Now I'm going to just kind of go over it again. Let's just say that you ran your comps and the property was worth $200,000. $200,000. 70% of $200,000 is $140,000. Okay? $140,000. Let's say that it's going to cost you 20,000 in the repairs. That's 20, so 140 minus 20 is $120,000. So you would need to purchase this property at $120,000. Now, I know if you're listening and you're brand new to real estate investing, you may be saying, but who in the world would sell their property at, at that kind of a discount? Well, that is where Tangie comes in so handy because she literally is, is selling leads. And so, and what we, to what we call motivated and or distressed sellers. And so these are people, maybe they have inherited a property from their aunt Sue that lives two states over. And it was wonderful that their aunt Sue left them this property, but maybe there's still a mortgage left on it. And the average American can barely afford to purchase their own property or pay their own mortgage little on another property. And maybe Aunt Sue hasn't updated the house since 2000 and it needs updates, it needs repairs. And again, it's two states over and most people do not have the time, the money or the know-how to, to be able to live in this city, keep their jobs, pay not only the mortgage, but the taxes and the upkeep and then travel that far to flip a property and just all of those things. So, so many times they just want to get out from under this property. And if you can put some cash in their pocket, well, then they're ready just to let it go. And you can get those kinds of leads from Tangi. And we also, um, so some other people that may be interested in selling a home at a deep discount is somebody that's about to lose their property into foreclosure. Um, you know, it's going into foreclosure in 30 days. They don't have time. They don't have the luxury of post putting their uh, property with uh, posting with a, a realtor, waiting for it to get under contract, waiting for someone to get their mortgage on that property and all of that. By that time, it's gone. So um, they are so many times in a distressed situation where we can just put cash in their pocket and, and get these properties. And we, what we do is we create a win-win. And I just named two, but there is a whole host of people in the situations. A lot of times people going through divorce, people who have lost their jobs, uh, like I said, a death in the family. There are just so many reasons that people are in a situation where they don't have the luxury of placing their property with a realtor and getting the most amount of money for that property. Usually as investors, we're not buying cute little houses with picket fence. We're buying ugly houses, houses with foundation problems or with the roof is leaking and with, the, with all kinds of issues, but that's okay. Because as long as we use that formula, we've estimated what our repairs are going to be. So as long as you estimate for that foundation or that, that roof that's going to need repair, then you are safe. And as long as you're buying using that formula, oh my gosh, um, that is how investors, really smart, savvy investors can flip over and over and over and make the, a lot of flipping money. So that was for first and foremost is using the golden formula every single time. And if I can't get it under contract, 
using that golden formula, then I just, I don't do it. Um, because I, now I may, I can do 80% of the ARV minus repairs and buy rentals and short-term rentals and those types of things. But if I'm flipping or if I'm wholesaling, I always use that golden formula that I just shared with you. So that is the very first thing that uh, you need to know. And um, then the next thing you know is need to know is you always want to make whenever you're flipping this property. So many new investors want tend to over improve the property. And you don't want to under improve, but you also don't want to over improve. So you want these properties to look exactly like the comps. Just really quickly, if you're not familiar what comps are, comps are comparables. And so you look at other properties that are comparable that have sold preferably in the last six mile, the last six months and a half a mile to a mile radius of um, the property, this investment property that you're considering. And you and you look at all the pictures of those properties. And you and you want to make your house when you're flipping it look just like the comps. You just it, so in other words, I always say. You know, popcorn, if all those other comps left the popcorn ceiling, um, then you want to leave the popcorn ceiling because by the you don't want to spend money scraping that popcorn ceiling, even though maybe you and I hate popcorn ceiling. Um, if you spend the money to do that, you're not going to make it back in the sale. So if everybody, if they, if they didn't do, uh, if the other comps did not replace the appliances with stainless steel appliances, then you don't want to spend the money getting stainless steel appliances. You just always want to keep it as much. Now, when I say make it look exactly like the comps, it doesn't mean that you have to paint it the same color and get the exact same, you know, granite countertops or whatever, but it does mean that you want the exact same quality. Do not over improve and don't um, under improve. Um, and that is again, how you're going to find yourself successful over and over and over. So many times, especially as women, we get emotionally involved with the property and we're like, oh, and like for me, I'm a, I, I love lights. I love gorgeous lights. So I could go, oh, I'm going to put this beautiful chandelier in this $200,000 house, or I'm going to take out this window and put in these French doors. And, and then whenever I get ready to sell it, see, it's in a neighborhood that's not going to sell over $200,000. So that chandelier was a waste of my money. Those French doors was a waste of my money. So just be very, very careful to uh, not over improve, not, do not under improve, do not get emotionally attached to the property. If you did not, when you were considering your rehab budget, you want to stick as close to that rehab budget as possible. Now, obviously there's going to be some unforeseen circumstances that you can't help. But that is the beauty of using that golden formula because it actually accounts for a few mistakes or a few things that you maybe weren't counting on so that you can still make a lot of money. Okay, is this good stuff? Is this good stuff? Okay, so um, then another tip that I always love to share is um, maybe one of the most difficult parts of Flipping is finding the right contractor. You always want to make sure that you have an investor friendly and investor savvy contractor. And this is some, you don't want to go out and hire somebody that's building new homes um, or remodeling homes for homeowners because they charge a lot more money. We're looking for an a contractor that under, has worked for investors that understand that we need all of this done in the quickest amount of time at the lowest, you know, a lowest cost possible, but still does a quality, quality job. And so uh, I always tell my students, I will share all of my specialized knowledge. I will share all of my resources, but I won't share my contractor. And uh, I'm kind of just kidding, but boy, once you find a great contractor, you want to hold on to them. You want to keep them working. And the person you do, if, if you're not keeping them busy, then you definitely want to share your contractor with another investor so that they don't run off too far. You want to know where they are so that when you have your next project, you can just keep them working. And you want to just always be fair to your contractor, be willing to pay them what they're worth because, um, 
um, your contractor can definitely make you or break you. So find a contractor that uh, really gets you. And then I tend to pretty much all of my houses look alike. I just use, especially if they're the same, like in the same price range and the same style of house, I use the same paint color, the same uh, granite, the same lighting, so that my contractor is just very familiar with what I do. And it just makes the whole process so much simpler. Obviously, if I'm doing a higher end a house, or maybe I've got, a, okay, this house is a ranch style, and all of the other houses were uh, traditional, well, then I'm obviously going to have to change it up a little bit. But if you can just stay as uniform as possible with your contractors, it just makes it so much smoother. And um so again, finding that contractor is the toughest thing. And once you find one, you want to treat them good, treat them good, treat them good. You always want to get some references and two or three references of other investors that they've worked for, as well as look at some pictures, say, hey, can you show me some of your before and after pics? That is going to be really, really powerful. Um, and but also a huge tip is paying your contractors, how you pay your contractors. This is where so many people make a huge mistake is when you hire a contractor and say it's a $40,000 job and they're going to say, OK, well, give me $20,000 up front and I'll go get materials and we'll get started. Listen to me. Never, ever, ever, ever do that. I always purchase my materials myself. Because I because if your contractor purchases them, there's usually a market, and I never pay them until after the job is done. So I will say, okay, I'm going to purchase all of the uh, um, stuff. Or what I can do is I can actually still send them. I have set up with Lowe's and Home Depot and Floor and Decor, the places that we use the most, and they can go in and actually buy all the stuff, and then whenever they get ready to check out. They will call me, Lowe's or Home Depot will call me and I will give them my credit card over the phone. They, I will say, hey, what's in the cart? And they will tell me what's in the cart. Or I can order it and have it delivered to the property. There's just so many different ways that you can do it. And then I pay them after the work is done. So typically your general contractor will pay his contractors on Friday. So on Thursday morning, I go walk through the property and I look to see what work they have done. And I pay them for the work they have done on Thursday so that he has time to get that money in the, into his bank account so that he can pay his help on Friday. And so I just, and, and I'm never lose any money. And now in the beginning, you're going to have some contractors fight you on that because that's not what they're used to. And I'm just like, well, if you want to work for me, that is the way that I work and I'm going to keep you busy and I'm going to be fair, but that's how I do it. I can tell you how many horror stories I have heard about contractors who, you know, they've given them 30,000 up front and they come in and they do a week's worth of work and they never show up. Um, they run off with material and it's, it's very, very difficult to do anything about it without long drawn out lawsuits and who has time for that. Right. So that is probably the, um, the, the buying the property at the right price and how you pay your contractors is probably some of the most powerful things that I can share with you. I promise you, I'm going to save you time and money and tears if you will just be really, really wise about how you pay your contractors. Um, I do want to say, don't do the work yourself. So many people think, well, I'm going to save a little bit of money and I'm going to do the work myself. I'm just telling you, you're buying yourself a job. It is hard work. If you buy using the formula that I taught you, you can afford to pay your contractor and um, make money. So, so don't do the work yourself or you're going to find yourself just running around to Lowe's and Home Depot and driving yourself crazy. Listen, I teach my students not to be a contractor, but to be a real estate investor. Let your contractor do that work and you go out and you get your next house under contract and the next house under contract. You be buying these leads from Tangi and getting these properties under contract and you be a real estate investor. And listen, I recently, I just finished up a couple. I ha We had eight flips at a time going. I'm down to five right now. And we usually have five going all the time, all year round. We just keep about five going. 
And that's how you make a lot of flipping money. Well, if I am out there, you know, trying to flip this house myself, then I, and maybe you're handy and maybe you got excited about watching HGTV and you're just dying to put some ship lack on something, or, Hey, if you want to, you know, on demo day, you want to go out there and, you know, knock a few walls down and, and, and get some good, you know, social media pics, that's fine. But if you start spending all of your time doing that, now you're a contractor, not that they're, I think, God for contractors, but I want you to be a very successful real estate investor. You can't be a successful real estate investor if you're doing all of the work yourself. So um, then the next thing that I want you to know is you want to get these properties on the market as soon as they are, you know, if that thing is completed. So a few weeks prior to a property being completed, I am contacting my a uh, realtor. And I, again, I want a very investor friendly, investor savvy realtor that understands. And she's going to come out and take pics and, and look, you know, start looking at the property before it's even finished. We're going to start talking about, hey, what are we going to put it on the market for? And so that as soon as that property is done, she sends her photographer out there. We get this uh, on the market as soon as possible because the faster it's on the market, the faster it sells, the more money is in your pocket, the longer that it sits, obviously, um, you know, the more money that it costs you. So a good realtor is the next tip. You definitely want a good investor, friendly investor, that's somebody that's willing to negotiate for you. I want a realtor that still does open houses. Less and less of them want to do that these days. I want a realtor that is not ready to drop the price if it's not, if it doesn't fly off the market in two weeks. Um, I, you know, I, I like to decide myself whenever I am going to drop that price down. And so um, that's, that's the thing. Also, when I'm telling you, I want to go back, when I'm telling you not to do the work yourself, I definitely want you to do walkthroughs on that property regularly. I go once, sometimes two times a week to every single property. And I am constantly walking through and I am looking for mistakes. I am looking for, oh, and things are going to happen. So many things they are going to put a door on backwards, uh, you know, just things happen. And so, or maybe that, you know, they put the wrong tile in and they're halfway finished. Well, it's better that you caught them then before they finish the whole thing or just so walk through, walk through, walk through and do not be afraid to call them out if the, if the work is not up to speed, you know, hey, this paint job is awful or you're going to have to retile this whole thing or that's not the right route. There's just so many things. So even though I'm saying not to do the work yourself, you don't just get it under contract, tell your contractor what you want and then run off to the next one. You have to stay on top of things and uh, just make sure that that everything is is going smooth in the way that it's supposed to be going. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's talk about some other little things here. Um, check out my notes since I can't bring my screen up. I do want to just take a look at these notes so I don't leave out anything really important. Okay, let's talk about permits. We have definitely want to pull permits or it costs you a whole lot of money. And especially if you're there in Florida, Texas is a little more lenient than Florida, we found out, but you just wanna pull the permits and the best way to know how, when and how, obviously if you're just doing some in and out, your paint and carpet, there's no need, but if you're tearing down walls, if you're really you know, changing things up, then you definitely want to pull a permit and keep everything on the up and up. Or you can really get hit with some, some big fines and I don't want that for you, but go in, you should join your local real estate investors network or association and be a part of that because that's for one, that's where you're going to find your investor friendly and investor savvy contractors and realtors and closing companies and title title attorneys and all the things that you need are at. You can find all of that. So um, definitely, and, and, and they can also help you to know uh, your local people that are flipping properties are going to help you know when you should, they can help you when you should pull a permit and when you should not. And um, just, you know, I'm, I'm trying to keep you out of trouble here. Okay, so now um, let's talk about the appraisal. 
The appraiser is coming. I always say that I pray harder when the appraisal is, it's time for the appraisal uh, and the inspection. I definitely am praying because you want the, those things can end up costing you a, a lot of money. So you definitely want to uh, be ready. So before, so let's just talk about an inspection for a minute. So before my inspector comes, the house is about to be, you know, finished. The inspector's coming and the end buyer, you know, the person who's going to be buy, purchasing your house and their mortgage is going to require this inspection and appraisal. And so I walk through with my contractor, myself, and we do all of the things that I know the inspector is going to do. He's going to flush all the toilets. He's going to turn on all the lights. He's going to make sure that the uh, the shower and all the sinks are, you know, there's a good uh, flow. Um, that he, they're going to crawl in the attic and the, under the property and uh, all of the things. I want to go ahead and go through that with my contractor so that I can see any of the things that need to be done before the inspector gets there. And I'm going to try to take care of all of those things before the inspector gets there. Now, you don't have to correct every single thing, but um, the, the less things that show up for the inspector, the easier the sale is going to be because they are going to actually write up a two or three page inspection report and get and send that to the realtor and to the to this potential home buyer and when they get this report and it's this long immediately red flags go off and it can scare them so I want that report to be as short as possible and I do the very same thing with my um, appraisal you want that house to appraise for as much as possible so um, again that's why you cannot afford to spend all that money on expensive lighting unless it's in a very high-end home. And then you can, and then you want those kinds of things, but you just don't want to over-improve. That's where you're going to be so disappointed when you get the appraisal back and he just didn't give you what you were thinking because you put that high-end quality again in this $150,000 property. Or So you just want to be really, really wise, really simple, because he's going to be comparing all of this to those comps. And you just want to make sure that you just fit in right there. And then again, you never want to go over budget. If you do not, you want to stay within your budget. And again, it's so easy to do to get carried away and um, so I watch every single penny. I, if I have a $40,000 budget, I go, I have that in an account by itself. And um, I am watching that money go in and go out so that I know, oh, just because I walk in one day and think, oh my gosh, French doors would just look right there. I didn't budget it. It can't happen unless it's going to raise the, um, the ARV that then the, remember the after repair value sometimes you get into a, per, a situation and I'm like oh I can actually um, raise my ARV if I do this now you would make your money back and the best thing is that is adding square feet I love to add square feet if I possibly can if you can add square feet oh my gosh it's everything um, so well because a property sells per square foot, right? So if it's selling at $200 a square foot and you can add, uh, one of the things that we do often is if there is an oversized garage, well, and I can add like a 10 by 10 mud room from that garage, well, that's a hundred square foot, right? And if it's selling at 200 square feet, that's going to raise my ARV to $20,000, well, and it's probably going to cost me three or four thousand to turn that, you know, convert that into a mudroom. So that is well worth the money, right? Okay, so those are just my um, tips that I love to share. And I want to take a few questions. And then if I can get my slides to work here in just a moment, I really wanted to share. Oh, and look, now they're working. I'm not sharing it. I hope they'll, I hope um, whenever I get, I share my screen because I would love to show you some before and afters. So 
Tangi, should I take some questions now or should I go ahead and try to share these before and afters? Let's try to share your screen first so that may, maybe we can get some more questions then. I mean, we have okay. more questions now, I'm just saying. Let's try okay. that. Okay, well, here is the foreclosures daily. Um, that's Tangi. Well, and I if, can't see your and, screen. I can't see your screen. So you did can't, you share? Okay, hold on a sec. Let's try it again. Can I you can see, see it now? now. Yay! <laughs> now let's see if it'll go. Oh, look, it will. Okay. This is so exciting. If you use okay. the, uh, so to get all these leads so that you can find these deals um, that I'm talking about, um, if you will contact Tangi and you use the REEN 1000 discount code, she is going to give you 20 to 30% off of some of those leads, depending on which package that you uh, purchase from her. And I am telling you, um, the best leads come from Tangi, especially probate and pre-probate. Uh, and I'll let her tell you more about those. But in my personal opinion, you cannot get leads, probate, pro pre-probate, as well. She's got tons of other amazing leads. But those are my absolute favorite to get from her. And so, again, Reen 1000, she's going to give you a discount. So, um, let's. I'm going to share my screen. It looks like it's working. Okay. So I want to show you some before and after. So this is a property that I flipped. Now, um, this is the back of the property. And for some reason, I don't have a picture of the front of this property, but you can assume that the front looked pretty rough, just like the back of this does. And this was just taken with my cell phone. So the befores are all taken with my cell phone. And then the afters are what the um, realtor took when she had her professional uh, photographer to come out. So that's the before, and this is the after, and obviously this is the front. So we just cleaned it up, painted it. We, we do a lot of the white paint. I told you all of my properties look the same, and I love cedar. I just, I, you can add some cedar to the, you know, a property, and it really gives it a higher end look. It spiffs it up. It doesn't cost a lot of money, and that's a whole different look, right? Do you like it? All right, this is the inside. So this is what that kitchen looked like when I got it under contract. Um, pretty rough, old. I want you to notice in that kitchen, this little area right here up at the front that kind of juts out where the dishwashers come out of the wall. Um, I just want you to notice that. So I want you to show you what we did. This is the after. So obviously we uh, some new flooring paint and put a new door down there just brightened everything up a cedar a venta hood some and and this is now so what I call this is like a Home Depot quality this is not high end that is a subway tile from from Home Depot very inexpensive and then this is the other end of that so you can see this that little jet that I was talking about we took that out so that it would go straight across. This is the other end. And then this is, okay. So then there was not enough room for a dining table. So we just did a little breakfast bar and extended it all the way to the end. That some put some really cute tile, but it's very inexpensive. And I know that that's not the best place in the world just to put a fridge out there, but there was no other place to put it. And when you're flipping a property, you just do what you have to do. And that worked and it certainly uh, looks um, so much better, wouldn't you say? Okay, this is the before bathroom, after. Again, just brightening it up, cleaning it up. Um, I, I won't keep saying this, but not anything about this house was high end. We kept it within our budget. Uh, this, uh, the vanity came from Home Depot or Lowe's or Floor and Decor as well as the mirror, I believe, came from the home store. So very inexpensive. This is the other bathroom. And this is, now we did enlarge that shower because it was just a tiny shower. Uh, as a matter of fact, there it was. Don't know what those water jugs are all about. <laughs> when you get, I told you we get some uh, pretty crazy houses. We buy a lot of hoarder houses. Uh, so lots of crazy things happening, but this is the after. Okay, so this is the living room. I always like to say this is complete with the hippie. Uh, very nice young man that we bought this property from. So you can just see dark and dingy. Very, very dated. I cannot wait to show you this next picture. This is the before right here. After. Okay, so let me tell you what we did. Obviously, all new flooring. 
And this is just the plank. So not expensive. That is not real hardware, hardwood flooring. Um, I'm going to go back. I want you to notice there's bookshelves on each side of that fireplace. We took those out, painted that fireplace white and, you know, just paint, cleaned it up. Also, obviously some new lighting. And then over here where you see that it's opened to, to the dining area, that was closed off with just these two little bitty panel doors that opened up into that dining area. So we just knocked out that wall so that it would have such an open concept. And so see, here's, you can see, those are the two little doors and that was the dining room before. And then this is after. So you can see now that the living room flows into that dining area. And then of course that opens up into that little kitchen area that we showed you. And again, the floor, the paint and the lighting. And we definitely stage. I believe that staging, well, it's just been proven that stage helps us house to sell quicker as well as you could, it tends to sell for a little more when you stage. So it's very worth it to stage. Here's the before uh, bedroom, master, after. Cute. Okay, I, I love to talk about this backyard. So um, the big situation is that road that you see back there was a pretty busy road with lots of cars just whizzing by. And so that was kind of a, a we knew that that would be a little turnoff. So this is the answer. We put up this big six foot fence. And now not only do you are way less likely to hear the noise, but you don't even see it. So now when you're showing this property, they're not even thinking about that busy road out in the back. And so cleaned it up, just a huge difference, isn't the whole thing? And this property actually made it in the Candy's Dirt. That's a little Dallas um, magazine here. And they said a mid-century modern uh, gets done right. So we were proud that they wanted to showcase that in their magazine. We've had a couple of houses in their magazine since then. Okay, I wanna talk to you about this property. This was um, a very, okay, so this is one of our very first high-end properties. This was a very unique house. It had, it was going into foreclosure, it was in bankruptcy. Other investors were just passing this up because it had been the last house built in this particular neighborhood for about 15 to 20 years. And then some really nice higher end homes were built all around it. And nobody was like, oh, nobody wanted to live in this house because it was the ugliest house in the neighborhood. It didn't fit in with those other properties. But we decided, well, we're going to take it on and we're going to see what we can do. So I want you to notice that little dinky fountain out there in the front. And are you ready? Look at this. And we did the changes. We whitewashed that. We changed out that um, little walkway. We got rid of that fountain, put in some new doors. It looks like a completely different house. Now this house is looking just like the rest of the, those houses in the neighborhood. So this was the before. And then there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a little dated. And this is the after. Just, it's amazing. We put some marble flooring and did an amazing paint. We obviously added a new chandelier up there at the top. This is just, again, a dark, kitchen are you ready this is this kitchen is amazing ready look at this we did double islands herringbone back there on the countertops white oak flooring look at all the cabinets in that is that a dream kitchen here is another view look at that is that just gorgeous i love it okay this is the living room and again, this is just my you know, cell phone. And I want you to notice these windows. Now, above those windows are that you can't see in this picture are, are more windows. And um, look at this. So we took out the, the windows down below and we put in French doors. Now, see, this was a high-end home and it was well worth the money that we spent to put in those French doors that opened up into that beautiful um, backyard. 
and just lightened it up. You like? This is before, after. This is a, a little dining area. Uh, let's, okay, this was the master bath. This house had six bathrooms. And so this is the master. Check this out. Does that just feel like a spa? Absolutely beautiful. This is the same bathroom. Just another view. Beautiful, beautiful. This is the media room. And so this didn't take much. Uh, new carpet, paint. And as a matter of fact, they already had those, the big recliners in there. And this was the backyard. Pretty just messy. And we did a built-in kitchen in the back. That house is ready for a pool and a family to move in. I want to show you the numbers on this. I told you I was going to show you how to make a lot of flipping money. Well, again, now this is a very high-end home. So, but we purchased this because we only buy with the golden formula. So, but we got a really good deal on this. The purchase price was $554,860.13. The repair expenses. So what did it cost to see? You saw the before and afters. It cost us um, $160,534 for that transformation that you saw. Then the closing and the carrying cost. Now, now that's, this is what they don't show you on HGTV is what are carrying, let's talk about what are closing and carrying. Obviously closing, whenever you close, you've got realtor fees, you've got to pay your, um, you know, the closing cost is usually about 2% of the purchase price. As well as what did it cost us while we were flipping that property? We had to, uh, have all the utilities turned on. We had to pay the taxes. You have to pay yard maintenance and all of those things. So those are carrying and closing costs. That alone was $110,454. We sold this property 26 days on market. Now, again, we were proud of that because that house had been sitting empty just for over a year. Nobody knew what to do with it. We flipped it and 26 days later, we sold it for 1.175. So the total expenses on that property, and this is the purchase price, the repair and the closing and carrying came to 825,848. So the total profit was 349,151. I mean, do you see that? It's 349000 for one flipping property. Now, for a girl like myself, I was in the medical field before I became an investor. After 25 years, I had worked my way up um, make, to making about sixty dollars to $65,000 a year. So you can see when I can make a profit on one flip. Now, actually, let me show you. Um, we had a we partnered with somebody on this and they actually brought all of the money to the table. So um, very wealthy man that we now partner with on many, many deals. He brought that entire 825,848 and 91 cents. He brought all of that money to the table. And then when we sold it, we did a 60, 40 profit. So we um, made it. Our profit was $209,490.64. He was a silent partner and made $139,660. He didn't have to do any of the work. He didn't have to get under contract. He didn't have to do any of the things, but he did bring all of the money. And that is one of the beautiful things about flipping is we always use other people's money. Now we sometimes have a silent partner that brings all the money, or sometimes we just, um, well, you know, use private money loan or a hard money loan. But we, again, are just creating win-wins for everybody that we work with. And he literally, when we finished this up and sold it and he received his uh, $139,000, he said, hey, great job team. Let's do another one. Uh, let's do as many of these as we can. So um, anyway, I hope that you enjoyed that. I just wanted to show you a little bit 
of the before and afters. We absolutely, I love flipping. It's such a fun way to make a lot of money. So I would love to answer questions for you. That was awesome. That was so Thank exciting you. seeing those houses. I mean, you do stellar work. And you know, I've always said, don't put a $5,000 tub in, a, in, in an area that's selling seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 homes. That's you know, right. Over, over rehabbing properties can really get you stuck. And a lot of new investors will do that. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, don't over rehab your house. In, in an area where you shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, I've done it myself. It's so easy to do, uh, but you learn really quickly. You're just and, throwing and away. I like money. that he did that. And a lot of people will do that. You know, these investors, when you when you go to people like the Todds and you bring them all the money, they're going to bring you all the money back. <laughs> so, I mean, it, a lot of people are so like, I don't want to say greedy, but don't let greed get in the way because <sighs> these are people that are going to take you under their belt and, and, and you could be silent or not silent, but yes. regardless, you can watch what they do, learn from them. Don't make your own mistakes and be willing to do a 60, 40 split. Yes. He didn't have to get his hands dirty and walked away with $139,000. Yes. Yes. I always say, would you, cause I love to partner. That is, that is just something that we do all the time. Would you rather make half of a whole lot of money or all of no money? And so uh, give me half, give me half, exactly. don't just go all day long. So and I teach that in the, in the real estate groups that I go to too. I'm like, raise your hand if you're a seasoned investor. And I'm like, all right, everybody look around because that's the people you want to bring your deals to. Yeah. Rather than making all the mistakes, they, yeah. you know, why reinvent the wheel? They know everything, you know, split your deals. I just did that the Thursday night on a meeting. So I teach that yeah. too. So, you know, Tangie, I just want to say here is also, I teach my students to even partner if, if they're, if they're low on money, partner on the marketing, you oh, know, yeah. list and then partner up. I have and a lot of girls that call me and split that. Yes. So that is the beauty of real estate investing that so many people don't know. Anyone, anyone can be an investor, regardless of how much money you make or don't make. You can right now, how much money you have, you can get started investing if you have the specialized knowledge, because there's so many ways to partner. So I, I made a slide with all your discounts. So these are already <laughs> discounted prices for, for being here on Teresa's webinar and check it out. We're doing a buy one list, get one half off. We've never done that in like the 20 years we've been in business. I've never seen us do that. We usually, it's like a buy county, get a free list price. And this time we're doing buy one list, list, get one half off. I have so many people in the group that want to buy a list and can't afford another list. So we're just going to chop that in half. So if you buy a list between now and Friday, you get all these discounted prices and you get a, a second list at 50% off. So I figured we'd do that rather than the old boring, oh, buy one, get one free. So it, you, if they pick one of these lists, you know, probate or pre-probate or inheritance, code violation, eviction or divorce, if they just pick one of these lists, they got to pay $5.99 for three months. But I always recommend, Teresa, them doing a longer commitment. You want to make them do a longer commitment. It, it helps everybody. It helps us. Yeah. It helps you. It helps them. Because when your student makes a longer commitment, it proves success because they're going to be working it longer, stronger, and harder. It gives your list time to produce and show you results. That yes. way you're not in a rush in 10 weeks to make a decision. Hey, did this work? Are you ready to renew? You can't make a decision like that in 10 weeks. Right. You might be as lucky as Teresa and you might get your first deal in four weeks. I literally had a guy call me a few weeks ago and Tangie, your leads are legit. My VA called two people and on their second phone call landed me a $75,000 assignment fee. This is no lie. Right here in Hillsborough County is $75,000 assignment fee. A week before that, a guy made a hundred and these are assignment fees. I and love it. I love it. And here's the deal. Even if you do get a property that first month, well, don't you want another one next month and another one the next week? So you just want to keep on marketing and marketing and marketing. So you want that long term. I never stop marketing. You just market like that for the rest of your life, you market. You would not believe how many people I'll call and be like, oh, we got our, our deal. We're working on it. So call us back in a few months. I'm like, you don't stop. No, how long it took you to get started. It's like starting over every, you know, you're just like, a, it's like a, just a, a terrible, you know, rotation that they'll have and it's just never going to stop. So 999 is for 26 weeks. And that means you're going to have a whole half a year, you know, and, um, and then you could, that saves you $200. And then of course, if you do the year 1750, it saves you like 650. 
I don't really talk about the foreclosures much on here. And I'm going to be honest with you because, the, you know, ever since the you know what happened for two years, we thought there was going to be this really big foreclosure boom. You know, when they looked at the moratorium, I got to be honest with you, it did not happen. Yeah. And not only that, the banks are totally working with everybody right now. They're being so lenient. These people can just stay in their properties forever right now yeah. in the foreclosure industry. That's why I'm telling guys, you know, go towards probate, pre-probate, inheritance, code violation, eviction, divorce. It's a much better lead source, way more equity, way more motivation right now. So this is what we got. $5.99 for three months, $9.99 for six months, $17.50 for a year. Go to foreclosures daily, fill out the form, use Reen 1000. Um, if you are not working with a representative already, and we'll take good care of you. And if you are working with a representative, reach out to your rep immediately this week by Friday to get this deal. Now, Teresa, let's, I want to know about your masterclass. When is your next masterclass? You know, I was just trying to look it up. I know it's in December. Um, I'm well, well, that soon after one you just had, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Cause we got to get one in before the end of the year, because listen, this is going to transform your 2023. And so let me just tell you this. It's without fear of herfuture.com. Without fear of herfuture.com, because that's what I want you to be is without fear of your future. And when you learn how to invest, well, then you never have to worry about your future again. And sign up. It's $17. And just like what I taught you today, I'm going to be teaching you wholesaling. I'm going to go deep into comps and that golden formula. I'm going to teach you how to wholesale, how to find in buyers, all how to find these deals, how to fund these deals. So seventeen dollars. They can go to your master class. Seventeen dollars. Is it in person? Is it online? It's online. It's online. It's seven days. Um, so from a Sunday to a Sunday. Wow. And it, yeah, nationwide and and rentals, short terminals. It's gonna. It's it's absolutely. How wide. long each day? It's about two hours. For Every two hours a day, day, seven days straight, fourteen hours of ridiculous training for $17? Yep. Yes. I have ladies that come through my masterclass that will have deals before the end of the seven days. They will this have- is amazing. It is crazy. So um, what do you do about the guys that are on here? We got to get your wives going, guys. We got to get your wives to this event because- Yes, you've got to get your wives. You've got to get your wives. Register your wives without fear for her future.com. Yeah, without fear of her future.com. I also, without I don't know if you fear know this. of her future. Yes, without okay. fear of her future.com. And I also just want to say, if you don't mind this little plug, I just wrote a book um, uh, without fear of her future. I saw that. I'm so excited. I saw that. I'm so excited. It was a bestseller. Yeah. Can you get it on Kindle? Yes. Uh, no, it's not on Kindle, but you can get it from Amazon. And um, without fear of her future book. And it's real, yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. So while you're trying to figure out the dates of that yes. Yes. masterclass, I'm okay. going to go over some of the questions here while you're looking okay. for that. Um, do you buy most of your materials, walk through the options with the contractor, or do you tell them what items you want? Okay, so this is what I do. I, whenever I have a new contractor, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it myself. But what, what I do is I start using the same contractors and then they know, and they will actually go purchase all of it for me. And then I am paying, they call me when they get there and I pay I did for go it. over this in the beginning. So Teresa is going to look for that. And I'm going to tell you what I remember her saying. So what's really cool is rather than the contractor saying, Hey, put $20,000 down and we'll take the other 20,000 in the end. Teresa's like, no, 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 no. I will buy the materials mm -hmm. go to Home Depot. I'm going to give you a list of everything I need and they can call her or you can go yourselves and they will tell her everything that's in the cart while the person's standing right there and they will get her yep. payment on the phone. That way yep. they're not going to do an upcharge on the material. A lot of these people will charge you 30% more yes, a markup on the yeah. material and then trip charges for going back and forth. And you don't want that, right? So there's no reason for them having a down payment of $20,000 if you're going to pay for the material in advance. And she doesn't pay them a dime until the job is done, period. Yep. And a good yep. contractor is not going to be hurting for money like that anyways. So That's they're right. going to have no problems waiting for the job to be done. Yep. That's oh. exactly right. So when we say for the work to be done, not completely, but every week, whatever the work they've done that week, I pay for it and get it. Yeah. And then okay, you so, it's weekly. so it's when the, every single week she does, they do the work. She pays them as they go. 
rather mm -hmm. than paying anything in advance because the last thing you want to do is get burned by a contractor. That's exactly right. Hey, Tandy, it's December 4th through 11th. December 4th, 4th through 11th. It'll and be I need to know that too. Because, you know, here's Christmas time. Next thing you know, I've got 500 people filling out a floor. <laughs> yes. Hey, you know, listen, it's funny. I always know when I see your master classes on Facebook, I always tell my assistants and the workers, I'm like, get ready. Yeah. <laughs> Tracy's doing an event. We know what happens. <laughs> yeah, it'll be the best Christmas present that you ever buy yourself. That's for sure. Okay. So our offer was based on 70% of ARV repair. Yep. The offer price should be greater than their payoff amount. Yes. Yes. So it does need to be greater than their payoff amount. And on a rare occasion, they will owe more. Now I teach another strategy for that called subject to the existing loan. And that is literally where we just, um, we could literally take over the payments. Obviously that's another whole strategy. I didn't have time to teach, but there is a way to handle that situation too. So does that answer this question? When the owner owes more than our offer based on payoff amount, how should I approach this deal? You have to purchase it subject to the existing loan. And that's another whole strategy that I teach in the masterclass. Okay. Hi, and thank you for sharing your knowledge with us, Teresa. How can I use new credit cards to get checks to deposit into my account with 12-month promo periods with 0%? I don't know. <laughs> if I sell or refi the property, I pay the balance in full. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I get credit card off all the time and I get checks attached to them. Yes. And you can just sign them to yourself. Absolutely. Deposit into your accounts. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I obviously don't teach the whole, I now I teach you how to use private money lending, uh, hard money lending, as well as how to refinance on these rentals and short-term rentals at the end. But yeah, you just have to follow the prompts. They, they literally will send them to you and walk you through how to do all that. I know you stated that you work on eight projects at a time. Do you project, do you have a project manager for each of those houses? I, sometimes I have one for each. If it's a smaller project, I may have one project manager that's overseeing two or three at a time. Okay. So it just depends on the size of the project. So you can't give it all to one, obviously. That's right. All right. Now in, in Florida, realtors, the state of board directors. So in Florida, the state of the board of directors, Aminta Goins. Oh, they're giving a phone number for the Florida <laughs> Realtors State Board of Directors. Why are they giving that phone number? I don't know. Okay. Anyways, moving on. I think somebody was just giving their information out, which is awesome. Florida State yep. is that they were saying who they are and there's their phone number. Should okay. I use my regular inspector or are they investor friendly inspectors? Well, you do not get to choose your investor. The buyer is going to, yeah, the buyer is going to have their own inspector. Okay. So the buyer is going to have their own inspector. That is correct because mm -hmm. it's up to them to get their house inspected. Right. At what price does your high end begin? Well, for us in Texas, and the same with Florida, because our prices are pretty, pretty close. Um, my high end would be over 400,000. Now, I realize if you're in some states, you can't, you could barely get a house for 400,000 and you're going up into the millions. So you would have to figure out what higher end is in your state. Do you have a designer that you hire to help you with the rehab ideas or how do you get like Past any indecisive on all those decisions for the rehab. Well, obviously, you know, I'm I'm in the Women's Real Estate Investors Network where I want all of the women to be a part of. And we have lots of designers in out. I even have a flipping coach that teaches you how to design, how to estimate repairs, how to how, oversee and ha hire as, as well as be a project manager and all of those things. So how long did that flip actually take you? That big one was about a 10 month maybe even 11 months. I was going to say six at least. Oh, that was, that, was a, that was a big one. Yeah, that's a big one. Talk, um, talk about the material differences, construction differences between your flips and your buy and hold properties. Um, obvious, well, it all depends on the ARV. Um, you know, if obviously at a rental, most of your rentals are at a lower to medium, uh, you know, ARV. So you just want, you know, we call it, you know, a rental property and you don't want to spend a lot of money on a rental property unless it's that high end, because you have to remember people don't take care of things quite the same. So you, and you typically are having to go in and paint it every single time somebody leaves and, and new, I will say this little tip, if you're wanting rental property, you want to do the wood floor or tile flooring. So no carpet in rental properties, because then you're just constantly um, replacing that. But yeah, just um, always keep it 
you know, at that medium price range, when you have a rental, unless it's very high end, which is, you know, not the most common rental property. How do I find hard money lenders? I know that I see them all the time at the local real estate yeah. meetings. What do you suggest, Teresa? Yeah. Oh, your local real estate investors network. There's going to be, they're going to be hanging out there. You can obviously Google it. I will say that if you can find private money lending, I prefer that over hard money lending any day of the week. Um, and you again, find that at your local real estate investors network or association, as well as I'm just going to keep plugging the women's real estate investors network. We have tons of private money lenders. So, Wade, this is only open to women. Well, we're hoping you have like a wife or a mother or a sister, a daughter, or someone. You know, or, 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 you know, you can be on the you can be on the women's real estate uh, masterclass that she's got going on, and you know, just uh, hope. Yeah, you can know. certainly get all of the information from the the. You're just gonna keep. You're gonna hear me calling you beautiful and referring to you as a she. But I'm still gonna give you the same amazing information, whether you're a man or a woman. There you go. So there's your answer. So the mastery class again is December 4th, 5th, 4th through the 11th, 4th through the 11th, December 4th through the 11th. And you can find that by going without fear of her future.com. That's without fear of her future.com probate seller or pre-probate. If the family member is in the process of the probate, we can still buy immediately without court approval. Well, hold on. It depends. Everything depends. First of all, is there a PR? Do you have to file affidavit of airship? Is it a real, like, is, is it full authority or partial authority? If it is, they have to bring the offer to the judge. And he usually signs right off. It's a, it's huge. I mean, a lot of people think you have to finish the whole probate process before you can buy the property. What actually happens when you put the money down, they actually have to put the money in escrow and they can't do anything with it, but you certainly can move forward with purchasing the property and most states and counties will let you buy almost right away. And the owners don't even know that. Like the people going through probate, I should say. When you reach out to them and want to buy their properties, they're going to be like, oh, we had to go through probates first. You can say, actually, no, you don't have to finish the whole process. Bring my offer to the judge. And what is your situation? Are you the PR? I mean, it, you need to get yourself hooked up with a local Florida attorney, but don't let that stop you from marketing. Market now. It's not yes. like the deals are just going to rush in your door in two days. You'll have time. People will trickle in. You can you know, estimate the rehab repair costs, do your comps, do your work, get a local attorney. If you're working pre-probates, you don't think they're going to want to work with you. You're going to be bringing them lots of business. Absolutely. I mean, we have an attorney here in Florida that's closing people uh, out in five to 14 days and sometimes a month, but in general, making it to where they can buy the house, like bam, bam, just like that. I've seen him close one in two days. So it, it's absolutely crazy. It's just a matter of the attorney that you get and who you work with. But a lot of people, not saying this to be mean, but a lot of people are very ignorant to probate. Doesn't, it's not a bad thing. It just means that they don't know. And I didn't know either when I started with the company 20 years ago, but probates is actually a much quicker thing than you'd think that it is. So, yes. Um, so that's pretty much the last question. All right. You know, um, December again, December 4th through 11th. Yeah. December 11th. Yep. I would love December to see for $17. You learn for two hours a day for seven days straight. That's 14 hours for 17 dollars yep unheard of without fear for her without fear of her future.com yep thank you Teresa. Andy, this really was so great. thanks for having me have a great night thank All you right. so much bye everybody bye bye <laughs>